Like a petulant child who doesn't get its way, North Korea likes to throw tantrums. A few days ago, the rogue state reminded the world of this by launching several short-range missiles, its first weapons test since President Joe Biden took office. But behind that aggression, dictator Kim Jong-un is in serious trouble. His regime is bankrupt. It desperately needs cash and it's willing to do almost anything to get it, even selling weapons and drugs on the black market. Now, though, they've been exposed by the unlikely combination of a hidden camera sting and a heartbroken family hell-bent on justice. Time is slowly healing the raw grief of Cindy Warmbier. This is it, babe. It's a cold day. But the gaping hole left in her family will never be filled. We wrote son, brother and friend, and that was just him. Everyone loved him. Absolutely everybody that met Otto loved him. It's such a big loss. Otto Warmbier was the American student who became a pawn in a game of international brinkmanship. Captured, held and ultimately killed by a regime that his parents, Fred and Cindy, view as pure evil. All I can say is Otto was treated just like they treat the people. He was a bargaining chip. He was put in a brain-dead condition from torture and they did nothing. A year and three months later, they release him and it was horrendous. Tonight, the Warmbier's brave mission to hold North Korea accountable for the death of their son. We're not afraid. We don't have fear of North Korea. We know they're, they're just criminals. As hidden cameras expose what the world has long suspected, Kim Jong-un's desperate hermit kingdom will do anything for a dollar. Weapons, we can build submarines factories. We can build tank factories, missiles, all made in the PRK. A clandestine network selling weapons and drugs around the world to anyone willing to pay. Is North Korea's only ticket to survival at the moment sanction busting? Yes. Essentially, North Korea is a criminal record. That is how the regime makes its money. You know that you must have people that you can fully trust, yeah. because if only one goes to the CIA, only one, you are f forever. And the weapons trade isn't just happening overseas. One of North Korea's loyal agents has been caught red-handed right here in Australia. The North Koreans are horrible people. The regime is horrible, disgusting human beings, criminals, thugs. They're, it's a criminal enterprise in a concentration camp. Otto Warmbier grew up in the sleepy suburbs of Cincinnati. So proud. Yeah. Tall and athletic, he excelled at sport and studied business at an elite university. This is our last day together as Wyoming High School's class of 2013. Tomorrow morning, we will all belong to another class, another job, or another city. To his mum and dad, he was the perfect son. How proud were you of Otto? I, I was really proud. You know, it's a firstborn. What can I say? Everyone knows you have a special bond with a firstborn. He was a standout. At the end of 2015, Otto had some spare time before taking up an internship on Wall Street. So at the suggestion of one of his university professors, the 21-year-old booked a five-day trip with a tour group to the world's most secretive state. What do you think the world needs to know about North Korea? <sighs> it's the scariest place in the world. Canadian Sarah McLaughlin is a teacher, but for five days in Pyongyang, 
She was one of Otto Warmbier's closest travel buddies. She's never revealed the inside story of that trip until now. The details inked in her journal. We left Saturday morning and Otto was held back, still trying to figure out why. <laughs> Ready? All right. Ready to throw it at me. Two, one. This is the last footage taken of Otto before he was plunged into a nightmare. Looking back, I, I definitely think that there was a plan and he was a part of it. As the group was boarding its plane home, Otto found himself at the back of the line. Suddenly, he was seized by guards and marched off. We were trying to protest and not get on the plane yet to wait for Otto. And there was about three of us. And uh, the officers with, with machine guns made us get on the plane. I guess if a guy with a gun tells you, you've got to get on the plane, there's no arguing. I've never experienced fear like that before. Everybody on the plane was just completely silent. Nobody wanted to leave. And we had no choice. North Korea accused Otto of trying to steal a propaganda poster from a restricted area at his hotel. Charged with subversion, he was hauled before the cameras to make what his parents insist was a staged confession. On the early morning of January 1st, 2016, I committed my crime. In hindsight, it's tragic what my son went through. It's tragic. He was used as a political pawn, a hostage. Everybody knows it. It's absurd to think anything different. I entirely beg you people and government of the DPR Korea for your forgiveness. Please, I have made the worst mistake of my life. The North Korean regime showed no mercy. Two weeks after his confession, Otto Warmbier was sentenced to 15 years of hard labor and vanished into North Korea's notorious prison system. He had been brutalized by them, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And when that guard pushed Otto out of the door, think about when that door shut and he's alone with those bastards. Think about that. That's what I'm haunted by. The only proof the North Koreans had of Otto's crime was this grainy and inconclusive surveillance footage. It's from a security camera at his hotel, and you can see the timestamp clearly, 1.57am on New Year's Day. But according to others on the tour, Otto wasn't even at the hotel at that time, so this shadowy figure simply can't be him. That vision has a timestamp on it. Your group had been out at a New Year's Eve party in the hours before that. Were you even back at the hotel then? No, the time didn't match up at all. I remember getting back to the hotel somewhere around 3 a.m., not at all before 2 a.m. So that's not even close to 2 a.m. You're saying it, it was more than an hour after that video was supposedly shot that you and Otto returned to the hotel? Correct. Everything about the whole story was fabricated, in my opinion. Fred and Cindy Warmbier say their son was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. They're convinced his arrest was a carefully calibrated act linked directly to North Korea's weapons program. That's when North Korea started firing off missiles, nuclear weapons, and using Otto as kind of like their, I don't know what you would call it, their prize, their American prize to rub it in America's face, what they were doing. Just a few days after Otto was seized, North Korea carried out its first nuclear test in three years, followed by the launch of a long-range missile. Tensions with the rest of the world were suddenly at an all-time high. 
and Otto became Pyongyang's human shield against any international backlash. North Korea doesn't do anything by mistake. It was their fourth nuclear weapons test, and they had a lot of things they wanted to cover, and they felt like Otto was going to provide them the security they needed to get away with these things. Following the tests, the United Nations imposed the toughest sanctions in history, prohibiting trade in everything from weapons through to luxury goods. But as you'll see, North Korea has been circumventing the embargo through a secret web of helpers and enablers. It's a network that's now been infiltrated and exposed in the most spectacular way by the most unlikely of people. It's 10 years undercover, which I can't recommend to anybody, but um, I did it and I'm proud of it now. Ulrich Larsen is an unemployed chef living in Denmark. But for 10 years, he was the mole, an amateur spy who tunneled his way deep inside the North Korean regime. Would you ever in your wildest dreams have thought that you'd become some sort of secret double agent exposing international arms races? <laughs> Not at all. Um, when I was a kid, I was always wanted to be James Bond. Um, but I was never expecting that to happen in real life. Ulrich's undercover mission began when he joined his local branch of the Korean Friendship Association, or KFA, a fringe group of fanatical supporters of the Kim dynasty. Determined to expose the group's inner workings, he joined forces with maverick Danish documentary maker Mads Brugger and became the mole. When Ulrich came to you and said that he wanted to work on this, in your heart of hearts, did you kind of think, this guy's wasting his time and mine? Well, uh, frankly, yes. Initially, I had no idea where this would lead. What lay in wait was a spy thriller beyond their wildest dreams. A shady world of arms dealing and sanctions busting all captured on camera. Alexander, good to see you again. Thank I'm you. very pleased to be here, always, you know. Over the course of three years, Ulrich filmed everything as he became a trusted lieutenant of KFA founder and president Alejandro Caldebenos, a Spaniard known as the gatekeeper to North Korea, who boasts of high-level links right up to Kim Jong-un. If North Korea is attacked nuclearly by the United States, the world will end as we know it. Alejandro is well known to 60 Minutes. In the country, they are our parents, the parents of the nation and the parents of our ideology. He was our guide yes. when we visited the reclusive state in 2015. <laughs> With his military uniform and unwavering loyalty to the world's most brutal dictator, He's always been a baffling character. But to Mads Brugger, he became something far more sinister. Is Alejandro Caldebenos, in your mind, someone who's trustworthy? He, in my mind, is um, a criminal and should be dealt with as a criminal. Alejandro wants to help North Korea make money. So he asks Ulrich if he knows anyone who'd like to invest in the country. It's the perfect chance for the mole to expose how they do their dodgy deals. He brings in an actor to play the role of Mr. James, a mysterious billionaire investor. And hidden cameras are rolling as they meet with Alejandro Caldebenos. Okay, pleasure to you. It became very clear that Alejandro wanted to open doors to you to a very dark world. Yeah, well, he wanted to sell weapons to us through the North Koreans and met amphetamine. We are under very, very heavy sanctions, as you may know, from the United Nations. So we have a parallel uh, way to do things. We are developing things in uh, pharmaceutical industry that are forbidden in any other country in the world. It's basically the same like methamphetamine. It's a methamphetamine for the drug market. Weapons actually is our main, but the problem is weapons 
in the moment that the U is a, is very very uh, the complicated subject. But weapons, we can build submarines factory. We can build ta ta tank factories, missiles, all made in DPRK. I'm just taking notes. I can facilitate you all kind of contacts directly with our state companies or any department or ministry in the country. It's when I saw that, I thought, you know, th this is remarkable, but can it be true? Or is Alejandro simply bragging? And uh, lo and behold, everything Alejandro has promised, um, c you know, happens. At Alejandro's insistence, Ulrich and his phony investor fly to North Korea, where they're led into a basement on the outskirts of Pyongyang. Ulrich is terrified that his undercover ruse is up. That's surely the moment where you start to wonder, is this the end for me? Yeah, I was really scared. But incredibly, they find themselves in the bowels of an arms factory where its president is ready to make a deal. It's almost unbelievable to watch it unfold, but clearly, this is how the North Koreans do business. Suddenly, they just put out this whole uh, menu of weapon and weapon systems, and I was just walking around with my camera and was like, whoa, this is, this is not happening. What was on there? Well, it was uh, Scott missiles, uh, thermobaric missiles, uh, hand weapons, tanks, really big missiles, and, well, practically everything you wish from weapons to start a war you could buy. As you discover, the North Koreans are willing to sell quite sophisticated and extremely dangerous um, weapon systems to basically anybody, even private persons. And you have to ask yourself, what happens when the real Mr. James comes to Pyongyang? While the mole and his investor were striking their weapons deal, little did they know that American student Otto Warmbier was being held just a few kilometers away. The worst part is when we were driving around Pyongyang and being treated like kings, um, Otto was in a basement somewhere getting tortured. It makes me sad to, to think about what happened to Otto and what could have happened to me. For 15 traumatic months, Otto's parents, Fred and Cindy, were in the dark about the welfare of their son. They were told not to make a noise, not to upset the regime, the fear they could jeopardise Otto's safety. It was really hard going through this with the family, stuffing our feelings and not being able to deal with anything. That whole time we were told he was in perfect health by the North Koreans, by the CIA, by our State Department, that he's in perfect health, he's working at a camp. All their intelligence tells them that. If he was begging for help, we'll never know. Through those dark days, the Warmbiers never lost hope that their son would make it back to safety. Hang in there, tiger boy. You're coming home. And not to worry about us, but stay strong. Stay strong, and we'll be fine as a family as soon as you get home. But even in their worst nightmares, they could never have imagined the circumstances in which he did. At the president's direction, the Department of State has secured the release of Otto Warmbier from North Korea. He is on his way en route home to be reuni reunited with his family. Fred and Cindy discovered that for 15 of the months their son had spent in captivity, he'd been in a coma with a catastrophic brain injury. He arrived home blind, deaf, jerking violently and howling. We saw evil. In his eyes, he had seen just ter terrible things. And he had been reduced to this animalistic creature that I couldn't hug and I couldn't get a feeling back from. And, and 
it, it, it's just, it was horrible. But I'll tell you what it does. It's a motivator. Because you go through that and you say, Otto, I'm, I'm here for you. And you made it home and we're gonna do, we're not gonna get, let these people get away with what they did to you, period. But it was horrible. The, it was just horrible. Otto would never be able to tell his side of the story. He died just six days later. Since then, his parents have made it their mission to expose the evil of North Korea to the world. The easy thing would be for me to let North Korea continue terrorizing me by remaining quiet and doing nothing. That would be the easy thing. But I'm determined for his life to have a huge impact on the world. You might think the North Korean threat is some other country's problem, but as you'll see, they've been busted trying to do deals right here in Australia. The mole, Ulrich Larsen, has spent years secretly filming Alejandro Caldebenos. Hey. Welcome to the bunker. Thank you. Thank exposing his clandestine work, cutting deals for North Korea. The idea the is to make the um, yes. methamphetamine mm. and what weapons. But at one of their final meetings... When talking about the business, do never use again that word, OK? Ulrich's mission almost comes unstuck. Alejandro is spooked and pulls out a bug detector. If you yeah. have a micro or something in you, oh, okay. you will make the signal, OK? OK. OK. Ah, OK. Here's a signal. Ulrich is panicking, but manages some quick thinking to cover his tracks. I had a car key. Uh, I rented a car and I had that in a small bag on the table. And uh, I tried to get his focus to that bag and, and he bought it. This is by remote control. Okay. So he was sending the signal. Okay. I sweep it many times. We don't okay. have anything Please. here. Ulrich is cold as ice. Personally, I would have fallen on my knees and begin, you know, screaming, please don't kill me. Documentary maker Mads Brugger says Alejandro's paranoia is understandable. He is uh, coordinating uh, sanctions busting. He is coordinating buying and selling of arms, producing drugs and so on. So he is, in my mind, uh, a criminal and uh, should not be trusted in any way. North Korea has dismissed the mole as a total fabrication, but there's no doubt it's shone a light on a shady and disturbing world. Given the extraordinary revelations, you might think Alejandro Caldebenos would be a little camera shy. Alejandro, are you happy to start? Yeah. But when we asked for an interview, he was more than willing to oblige. I don't care what others say. If I care about what other people said, I will not be sitting here right now. And soon the conversation turns to North Korea's desperate financial plight. When it comes to these international sanctions, how damaging have they been for North Korea's economy? DBRK is the most sanctioned country in the world. So we could say that things are more difficult to import, things are more difficult to export, but they still find a way. And when we turned to his own starring role in The Mole, he insisted the documentary makers were the ones being tricked. You've been heavily implicated in international deals for, for weapons and drugs. Were you embarrassed to see that footage come out? No, there's some people that wanted to frame us and what we did which was actually to frame them. What do you mean by that? I will not give more publicity to the rubbish, but I said we had a plan. But it doesn't look good. I mean, you're there discussing weapons. You're there discussing drugs. You're boasting about how you can cut deals with Kim Jong-un's men. 
This was not why I was coming here for the interview. I thank you very much and see you yeah. another time. Alejandro, I can see you there. What's your objection here? We just want to get your response. Alejandro has left the building? Yeah. Alejandro has responded to your documentary and said he actually laid a trap for you and your crew. Yes, it's so very interesting. Essentially, I think if Alejandro was, you know, playing along and he knew that we were filming him in secret, that would make my documentary even more interesting. Do you think you've destroyed his business model now? I hope so. But North Korea's criminal network spreads across the globe, including right here in Australia. Amidst the skyscrapers and suits of Sydney CBD, this is a very unexpected sight. A passionate group of North Korean sympathisers spruiking the apparent achievements of Kim Jong-un's regime. You see, the capitalist regime knows that their efforts to wage their Cold War drive against North Korea... But there's another man they're here to support as well. His name is Chan Han Choi, a North Korean loyalist, and it's the first day of a trial for him at the New South Wales Supreme Court. They are the only reason why the Australian regime finally had to give Choi bail last November. The light-hearted nature of the rally outside court belies the seriousness of the charges the 62-year-old is facing, accused of violating United Nations sanctions by brokering the sale of missiles and petroleum on behalf of Pyongyang. It's quite extraordinary to think that such an elaborate international operation was coordinated from this humble apartment complex at Eastwood in suburban Sydney. But it's from here that police first alleged Choi was working as a middleman on deals for weapons of mass destruction and selling petrol from Iran to North Korea. They even claimed that Choi would boast to his contacts that he had connections all the way up to Kim Jong-un himself. Morning, everyone. We're all right to go. Now, look, thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, look, today I'm going to give some details in relation to an AFP cybercrime operation investigation that occurred here in Sydney, which has exposed serious breaches of both domestic and international law. Chan Han Choi was arrested in an AFP raid on his home in 2017. This man was a loyal agent of North Korea, believing he was acting to serve some higher patriotic purpose. I think at the end of the day, he would sell whatever he could to, to make money back for the North Korean government. The accused was initially locked up at Long Bay Prison, from where he continued to phone his fellow North Korea supporters, rallying the cause and denouncing international laws. I strongly believe that the United Nations economic sanctions imposed on North Korea are both unjust and unfair. The trial for the unassuming Korean began earlier this year, but after several days of evidence, he ended up pleading guilty to charges of contravening UN sanctions by brokering the sale of arms and petrol on behalf of North Korea. He's now facing up to 10 years behind bars. I'm proud of Australia. The way you change North Korea's behavior is you challenge them under the rule of law. They're committing illegal acts, and we know this, and our government knows it, but they should help be held responsible. Since the death of their son, Otto, Fred and Cindy Warmbier have been on their own mission to tighten the screws on North Korea and the regime's enablers abroad. Their pressure has led the US to declare North Korea a state sponsor of terror. And there have been other successes in shutting down the money trail that props up Kim Jong-un's regime. Thank you for asking us to speak, because it's five years since I saw Otto, since since, and, and nobody's forgotten him still. 
And I just want to tell North Korea, as long as I'm alive, no one's going to forget what you did to Otto. I'm not going to let them. I'm not going away. And I'm in it for the long, the long haul. I'm just patiently waiting because the day is going to come when that regime is over. And I won't be happy then. There's, there's nothing that can make me happy, but I'll be relieved. You're both very proud parents, but I, I must say, I think Otto would be very proud of both of you. No more so <laughs> than I am of him. They murdered Otto, they murdered him, they murder people every day. And that's why I say, how can I be quiet? You know, Otto would be, he'd be like, mom, I don't want you to do this if it's gonna hurt you. And it's not hurting me. It's not hurting me. It's helping me. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.